OK, sound check. Can you guys hear me? Yep. All good? Loud and clear? Thank you. Sound check. Very good. OK. OK, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, so in this session, we are going to talk about uh, Stanley X at scale, uh, specifically some of the challenges we encountered, how we solved it, and some of the other uh, lessons that we have learned. Um, so before we uh, get into the slides, the first thing we want to start with, obviously, we'll do our introduction. So my name is Ramaswamy Subramanian. A lot of people butcher my name, so to keep it simple, I go by Ram. I'm from Wind River. Uh, from the Starling X community perspective, I'm a technical steering committee member. I'm also the project lead for uh, distributed cloud as well as the Flock services project. Thank you. Thanks, Ram. My name is uh, John Kung. I'm also from Wind River, and I'm also the uh, Starling X I can, a Flock Services tech lead, um, and I'm also an uh, active contributor to Starting X since inception. OK, so before we get into the slides, probably a quick show of hands. How many of you have used Starling X? One, OK, <laughs> that's good. Well, hopefully, okay. after this session, you guys are excited to try, try Starling X and then play around with it, and then hopefully, you'll be able to contribute. <laughs> OK, so Starling X, if you don't know anything, it's like an infrastructure software stack, uh, which is predominantly used for uh, uh, cloud-native workloads. Um, so Starling X is a generic platform which is capable of supporting multiple domains. So Communications or telecommunications is the primary domain where Starling X is production. Uh, it's deployed in a production environment at scale. There's lots of functionality or the capabilities that is being used in the telecommunication en environment. Um, <clears throat> so as part of this production environment, we have a quite a, a lot of learnings or experiences that we have understood and then we have implemented quite a bit of uh, software enhancements to make sure the software is highly scalable it is capable of uh, supporting lots of different capabilities but when it comes to the solution or the styling x capability it is not just limited to the telecommunication uh, network or telecommunication uh, environment it is suitable for energy enterprises emergency services automotive industry industrial healthcare agriculture robotics aerospace manufacturing and retail so solution is very generic and and is capable of supporting multiple different use cases. So since we are targeting or we are trying to evolve towards an environment which involves multiple different domains, obviously the solution needs to be scalable. So the most simplest or the most easy way to deploy a Starling X is, is called an AIO simplex environment, which essentially means you bring up a server which has got some CPU, some RAM, some storage, you install Starling X, you get a cloud native environment on top of which you can run a whole bunch of cloud native applications. Um, so the next capability where if you want to have some type of a redundancy, some type of a high availability architecture, the next model is two server model where majority of the control services have high availability. What that essentially means is for, for whatever reason, if one server goes down, the services will still be operational, the second server will be able to take over, and then it will be able to provide the necessary services. And depending on the application requirements, if there is a need for additional resources, additional compute resources for um, deploying much more resource in intensive applications. So that is where the standard configuration with controller storage comes into picture. So the difference between this and this is your controller services, they are still highly available, they are redundant, uh, but when it comes, comes to the compute function, it is fairly distributed into multiple different workstations, which is identified as workers. But when it comes to the storage, they are still co-located or they're still in the same server along with the controller services. And there could be use cases where the customers are, depending on the application workloads, they may request for, okay, I need more storage, I want more compute capacity, and then let's try to isolate the controller infrastructure services to a couple of servers. So that is where this configuration comes into picture, which we call it as the standard configuration with dedicated storage. Um, so all these configuration, they are more or less located in one single environment, or what we call it as a data center type of environment. But 
based on the evolution that we are seeing, based on all the distributed computing that are being requested for multiple different use cases, Starling X provides this capability, what we call it as the distributed cloud capability. So what we mean by that is there is a central cloud or a system controller which is managing all these fleet of edge clouds, and majority of the application workloads are running in this edge clouds. Um, so for the rest of the session, we are going to focus more on distributed cloud. Um, so we have a, quite a lot of details in, in, uh, related to distributed cloud, and then that is where we are going to focus and then uh, spend more uh, details. So the first and the foremost thing that we want to start with the distributed cloud architecture. Um, so the important thing that, is, that we have to notice here is called the edge clouds. So these edge clouds are geographically distributed among multiple different uh, locations. Um, these are not edge clouds, they are full clouds, they're just not workers. What we mean, uh, mean by that is the edge clouds have full autonomy in terms of all the decisions that it needs to make to provide the cloud native application, whatever it needs to be um, executed successfully. So they have the local control plane, uh, which is highlighted here. And then in terms of what kind of edge clouds that could be deployed, so we do not have a limitation. So in the previous uh, slide, we spoke about multiple different configurations, like deploying in one single server, high availability, the standard configuration, standard configuration with the dedicated storage. So all those configurations can be deployed at uh, the edge cloud side. Um, at the end of the day, it depends on the use cases and then the resource requirements that is needed for running the applications. So based on the application requirements, uh, whoever is deploying this network, they can decide how far they want to scale the network and then what type of edge clouds they want to uh, uh, deploy. Um, so once you have multiple edge clouds, which is distributed across multiple different servers, the next important question is, okay, how do I know what is the status of my edge cloud? So that is where the central cloud comes on a picture. So the, probably the first thing that I want to highlight is the dashboard. So the dashboard essentially means you have a single pane of glass view of your entire distributed network. So using the dashboard, you have full visibility into what is the status of the edge clouds. Are they operational? Are there any alarms? Are there any events? Are there any updates that needs to be made? Everything is visible at the central cloud level. Um, so once you have that visibility, let's assume you're able to successfully deploy, the next set of activities that are needed is, okay, lifecycle management. So what I mean by lifecycle management is how do you manage the software updates? How do you upgrade the systems? How do you make sure if there are any updates that needs to be applied, um, all those capabilities available? So those are provided by this lifecycle management, the software upgrades and updates, and then we also provide firmware um, orchestration as well. So all those capabilities are centrally managed from a central cloud, and then the central cloud has got all the intelligence of whatever it needs to make sure it notes what subcloud it is talking to, what operation is being executed, monitor the status of all the operations, and then provide that feedback to the user so that the user knows um, how the system is behaving. Um, so once we have that, let's say on these edge clouds, once it is de deployed, if you want to deploy any applications, let's say containerized application, so we provide this centralized container image registry as more like a location where all the images are stored, and then the subclouds try to pull all those images from the uh, container image registry. Um, obviously, if you want to deploy new subclouds, um, the deployment capabilities are provided in the central cloud as well. Um, so from Starling X perspective, we want to be highly secure and make sure everything is managed from a central location. So that is where the certificate management, the identity management, everything comes into picture. Um, in, in addition to all these things, um, obviously we provide the system-wide level infrastructure orchestration, um, which is used from the central cloud to manage or to orchestrate all the different operations that gets executed on multiple different edge clouds. Um, so in terms of the cloud native applications that could be deployed, I mean, obviously Kubernetes, which provides the environment for running um, uh, containerized application. In addition to that, we also support OpenStack. So again, OpenStack is running as a cloud native application on top of Kubernetes, and then using that, you'll be able to deploy your VMs, whatever that is needed for OpenStack-based workloads. Um, okay, so the next question that we get asked is, okay, this looks fine, it looks cool, okay, how do I go about to install? If I want to deploy an edge cloud, what are the steps involved? How easy is it for me to deploy the edge cloud and then bring the system uh, operational? Okay, so 
Thank you. That is where zero touch provisioning comes into picture, and then John will take over all that. Okay, thank you. So as Ron mentioned, um, in order to deploy at scale, we need to start at the beginning. Um, so how do we deploy an edge, a bare metal edge server and turn it into an edge cloud? So what we are calling zero touch provisioning, perhaps I should contrast that with um, an experience I had about 10 years ago on a different product. In that case, uh, when we wanted to deploy a new geographically distributed system, we had to actually go on site um, after the network planning has been done already, uh, actually wired in, but we would have to work in a, probably a cool windowless room for a day or two just to get up the initial access point so that then we could move to a windowed room and do the provisioning. That would probably take uh, a couple of days just to bring up an edge site. With starting X, we have capabilities now that enable us to perform this much, much more automated hours and minutes instead of days. Um, so essentially, um, the capability starts with an edge cloud server uh, with a device that supports the Redfish management protocol. Basically, it exposes a REST interface uh, once it's connected up uh, and wired to the network. There are some issues, of course, that we, can, that we have to overcome when we're trying to deploy uh, this type of system. It's uh, geographically remote, so um, do we actually need to go physically on site after the initial exposure of the uh, REST interface? Uh, network, the network itself, layer three network, could have uh, latency, could have bandwidth limitations, and uh, it could even have error rates in them because of the geograph geographical distance between them. Operations, as I alluded to earlier, um, there's also cases where there the steps to bring up an edge cloud could be complex and you'd have to check for a certain state before proceeding to the next one. So all that could be very time consuming, even if you had all the steps correctly. <clears throat> so what, uh, the distributed cloud in starting X offers us is um, when we want to add an edge server, all we need to do, uh, if we distill it down, it's a subcloud add command. So we use the DC manager services on the central cloud to uh, issue a redfish command. But that redfish command is issued with a special boot image that the central controller creates. Um, basically, that gives it enough of the installer so that it can set up the proper interface for Bootstrap. And after that point, um, that is pushed through, uh, through Redfish API, and basically it mounts and pulls the packages required for installation. In the install phase, it's pulling down the packages or OS3 repository required to bring in the rest of the software because as at the early stage, we don't need a very large uh, boot image, maybe 80 meg megabytes or so. Whereas here, now we're pulling, could be gigabytes of uh, data being pulled across. And then um, also back at the system controller, or the, at the central cloud, uh, it detects the completion of the install phase. So it's all coordinated by the central controller um, there's no manual intervention at this point. We can observe, the, or the distributed cloud central controller can observe the, uh, the progression. And <clears throat> basically, once it detects that the interface is up, it can de it, it'll move on to the bootstrap phase. At that point, it'll bring up the essential services and pull down container images. Those in itself can be several gigabytes being pulled across um, a layer three network. And at that moment, uh, our system is deployed ready. So that can take about, um, in, in an example, say with 50 milliseconds, about an hour and a half, let's say. So that, that's, that's pretty good. But we, uh, we had features thereafter to improve it even further. And uh, also to adjust the, uh, account for a particular use case where uh, the initial install uh, 
we, we would start, one option is for the very initial install, we could start with a factory installed pre-staged ISO with container images um, stored on a persistent partition with the uh, OS tree repo that can be pulled locally during the install and the container images that could be pulled down during the bootstrap phase. So those could be gigabytes of data being pulled uh, locally for the initial install. And only in the optional fallback scenario would we then need to pull back uh, from the services on the central controller and it could be complete to deploy ready. Uh, so just comparing the pre-stage install to the uh, remote install case, it's about three times faster. So about 22 minutes versus 75, I say. Uh, that's, in either case, it's much, much better than what, what we were doing 10 years ago in a different product. So um, all that would be managed. Okay. Thanks, sir. Okay. So since we are dealing with lots and lots of servers, so there is a need for orchestration and then try to eliminate as many manual operations as possible. So from Starling X perspective, we call it as a multi-level orchestration because the orchestration is not just limited to the central cloud, but we also expand it all the way to the sub-cloud. Um, so there are different capabilities here. Um, so probably to start with uh, the zero touch edge. So Starling X provides fairly simplified mechanism for deploying a distributed cloud um, logically and then intuitively. And then it's multi-cloud. Um, what we mean by that is all the different lifecycle operations that get executed from the central cloud, it knows or it has information about the geographically distributed environment and then it is able to orchestrate all the different operations. Um, so the biggest Capability is the single pane of glass. Uh, since you're managing a distributed cloud environment, having a single view in terms of how the network is looking like and then how the different orchestrated operations are getting executed is very crucial. So we pro provide the single pane of glass view. Um, obviously, the security is very, very important to make sure all the different operations are secure and then uh, there is no breach anywhere. Um, and edge over edge enabled, what we mean by that is from the central cloud uh, itself, you are able to manage all these resources uh, remotely and then try to orchestrate all the different operations. Um, so we have a walk through more like a flow in terms of how an orchestration would happen within an edge cloud. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now that we've uh brought up the edge cloud. Um, in terms of day two operations, a typical day two operation might be a software update or um, we call it day two, but it could be many, many days later. A software update or firmware upgrade, for example. So how do we do this? Um, again, without needing to be physically at the site. So wh when the system is brought up um, after the bootstrap and deployment phases, a flock, starting X flock services are running at the edge. It provides, flock services is a, actually an aggregation of multiple services. It includes such things as configuration management, host management, host management, for example, we can reset and power down hosts within the edge, uh, services management for high availability within the edge. Um, so fault management, for example, just to alert, alarm. All those services are within the Flux, just lumped together here in Flux Services API. They're in fact separate APIs. But in this example, uh, an update request comes in. Um, let's say it's a firmware upgrade. Now a firmware upgrade can be very complex. It, it can involve multiple device images and they need to be done in a certain sequence. That sequence is managed within starting X. So that is managed within the orchestrator within starting X, um, the Vim orchestrator. Uh, from there, it's able to reach out to service agents um, and also coordinate with Kubernetes for the multi-host case as necessary to drain a node so that it's ready for an upgrade in case we need to take it out of service. And finally, the request to the service agent to actually perform the service uh, firmware upgrade or software update. All this will be coordinated by the orchestrator. It knows what order to do the device images once it's been uploaded by the update request. So that is, that is all within the edge. The box on the right is uh, within a single edge cloud. 
by exposing that REST interface the system controller has command and control at, at the edge. So this next um, illustration is really for at the system controller distributed cloud level. The distinguishing service here is the DC manager service. It's responsible for managing the uh, states and services at the subcloud. So in this example, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the user back here wants to do an orchestration strategy. For example, they might have a group of subclouds. Let's say they've got, there, there's a bunch of, there's a, a number of nodes at the edge, many, many edge clouds at the edge. It could be a thousand as supported by starting X today. Uh, they could be anything from, uh, in this example, um, with our uh, canonical use case, uh, the uh, 5G radio towers, but as um, the keynote presentation Jeff mentioned yesterday, there's a very broad uh, set of use cases that could be applied. But in this case, uh, say for example, the, uh, the administrator wants to do a subcloud, a, a set of subclouds to orchestrate. Let's say he wants to just do 100. Uh, we can select a group of 100 through, uh, through an or orchestrate strategy. That goes in through APIs and on the central controller. Uh, depending on the type of update, um, it may need to proxy it to persist in a HA managed file system. Uh, the reason it needs to persist that is because uh, these could be, for example, in the previous example, uh, firmware images that it needs to send to the set of however many subclouds it wants to orchestrate. It then in turn sends it to the DC manager service, uh, which then reaches out um, to the subclouds uh, through the update mechanism, mechanism that uh, was illustrated previously. And it's able to orchestrate this uh, and monitor the progress as it progresses through the states. So each, each subcloud would happen in parallel based on the, uh, uh, the orchestration model. Uh, I mean, the, the orchestration we can select uh, singly applied or parallel apply, and we can even select the number to be parallelly applied, uh, all depending on your typically network bandwidth limitations, things like that. Um, so the, as it's going through the update, um, the edge clouds may pull back from the shared services on the central controller for certain information. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, all that's good. Uh, the single pane of gap glass concept that uh, Ram had mentioned is uh, we're able to provide from, uh, from the horizon, starting X horizon GUI, uh, basically a summary view, overview of uh, each subcloud state. So in this example, for, um, we can see every subcloud is uh, the availability state is, is uh, green, uh, the deployment state, so we, we track all this within the DC manager. There is one uh, here that's showing a degraded state, and if, you, if we were to click on this button here, we can get the alarm details. So in, in this case, we can see, oh, okay, uh, there's, a, there's a minor alarm at this uh, subcloud, and we can even drill in to see what the exact alarm is. Uh, there's also, within a subcloud view, there's all the different resources that are orchestrated by the DC manager that we can see as well. Um, so at the edge, I mean, we can uh, threshold a lot of the data that's incoming, and um, it can dynamically learn available sensors to decide uh, what to backhaul, like what to send back up to the DC manager. Uh, so that's that's an overview of uh, some of the capabilities. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of the scale, the Starning X, the latest release is 8.0. Um, so with a system controller, we are able to manage and support up to 1,000 edge clouds. So that's the scale that we support today. 
And in terms of, obviously, uh, with the so many subclouds, there are a whole bunch of uh, lifecycle management operations. So over the years, with all the different releases, we have consistently worked on improving the scalability of the different operations. So as an example here, for example, if we take edge cloud install, in release 4.0, we supported only two parallel edge cloud installs. And then we increase that to 50 in 5.0, 50, we maintain the exact same capability in 6.0, we increase it to 100 in 7.0, and then we support, again, the same 108.0. If you look at the, all the different operations, we have consistently worked on improving the scalability of the system as we try to scale the number of edge clouds that is supported by a single uh, system controller or a central cloud. So in release 8.0, we introduced two new capabilities, which is backup and restore. So the backup, we are able to support 250 parallel edge clouds backup from a single system controller and then for restore uh, we support 100 parallel uh, restore uh, from the uh, system controller the uh, central cloud um, so if you notice here there is a pattern here just Sorry. a question is it remote backup and restore yeah. or where's the the backup remains on the subclouds? So we have both flexibility. We have the capability to store the backup at the subcloud level, or we can transfer it back to the central system controller or central con controller. Okay. So this could also be used for subcloud uh, restoration after yeah. some, let's say, software. Whatever, okay. yeah. yeah. Whatever okay. failure happens. But these numbers are not near 1,000. So That's true. These are, so, uh, these are parallel operations. At what single instance, when you run the command, you can execute 250 in parallel, for example, if you want to do backup. So, OK, so uh, I mean, quick time check here. I think we have three minutes left. We still have a lot of content to go through. So we'll go through that. And then if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer here or in the Wind River booth. <laughs> OK, so I'm not sure if you guys are noticing the pattern. Um, if you look here, probably there are a few operations which are 100. So we have some of the roadmap features in 9.0 in future where we want to scale that number as well. Um, so once you have a network which is fairly distributed with lots and lots of edge clouds, the amount of time that the operator, the user has to spend in managing or maintaining the network, we want to shrink that as much as possible. Okay, so uh, here there are quite a few details in terms of what are the challenges we encountered and then what are the solutions uh, uh, that were implemented. Um, so most common thing or most common way of solving a scalability challenge is add resources. Add more CPU, add more RAM, add more storage. But when it comes to Starling X, we went in the opposite direction. What I mean by that is, what can we do from the software itself? How can we make use of the existing resources that is available to the system in a much more optimal manner to scale the number of operations that are supported. So there is a there will be a, there is a common theme here. Um, so some of the themes is like optimizing the algorithm, uh, fine tuning the file system, the uh, the storage space that is needed, and then fine tuning the different resources that are used by a specific service by refactoring, redesigning. So those are some of the things that we did here uh, to scale the number of parallel operations that could be executed. And then we have a few more operations for uh, other uh, lifecycle operation, uh, operations. Um, even here, pretty much the same theme, optimizing algorithms, implementing caching, fine-tuning fine the threat pool, eliminating uh, threat contentions, and those type of things. Um, so those are some of the things that we implemented uh, to scale the system to support um, quite a high number of uh, parallel operations. OK, um, so here in this example, uh, we have two I would say distributed clouds, which are geographically um, distributed. So there is one distributed cloud here, and then there is another distributed cloud here. Um, so in Starling X, we su supported capability, what we call it as a rehoming in edge cloud. So for whatever reason, either as part of disaster recovery, uh, let's say, for example, this central cloud, it goes it goes into some kind of a failure condition. Uh, since the styling, based on the styling X architecture, the edge clouds are fairly auto autonomous, and then all the applications, whatever that is running, since we have a local control plane, uh, even for whatever reason, the central cloud is gone. Um, the, the operations or the applications that are running on the edge cloud, they're still operational. They're able to provide whatever service that is needed. 
Um, so in order to accommodate these type of failure conditions for the users or the operator to have visibility into what is going on in the edge cloud, we support a functionality which is called rehoming the edge cloud. So what we mean by that is, let's say for example, we have this edge cloud, it's fully operational, it's fully functional, we want to move it, uh, the management aspects of that particular edge cloud uh, to let's say this uh, central cloud. Um, so I know in the picture it looks very simple, but under the hood there are a lot of changes that happens as part of this rehoming operation, which includes changing the network configuration on the edge cloud so that it knows which is the new uh, central cloud it is talking to. Uh, we also change the secrets and the certificates, whatever that is needed for communicating with the central cloud for accessing the registry or you know, pretty much all the different uh, operations. And then the central cloud is able to successfully communicate with the edge cloud to pro provide that operation view of uh, the edge cloud and then how the edge cloud is operating. Um, so all these operations, um, it's very transparent to the application workloads. Pretty much all the configuration changes, whatever that is happening, it's all managed at the Starling X infrastructure layer. And then from the application perspective, there is still the exact same uptime. Um, it's fairly transparent and then everything is uh, working as expected. Okay, I think we are pretty much uh, at the end of the presentation. So if there is one thing that you take away from this slide, all you have to remember is it's Starling X is one cloud, it's any scale. So Starling X is extremely scalable based on the different verticals where you, you would like to deploy Starling X for the different use cases. It can operate on as simple as one single Farad server or if you need high availability, we support that. Or if you need much more sophisticated, complicated uh, storage or compute requirements, then we have a, a, a distributed environment which can be hosted in a data center or it could be in an edge cloud as well. Um, so if anybody is working on any other verticals where you have some use cases or some functionality, the chances are Starling X already supports it. So we encourage you to explore, to try Starling X. If you want to have more discussion, please do get engaged in the Starling X community discussions. And any feedback you have or any suggestions or any contributions to the Starling X uh, project, uh, we welcome from everyone. Okay, so with that, we'll wrap up. Um, any questions? Okay, probably I'll, I'll start at the back. Um, do you care about networks, so about switches or so? Or do you suggest that they are magically there? Uh, definitely, we depend on the switches. We also, based on the Starling X deployment, there is a certain uh, level of uh, networking requirements that we prescribe. So we definitely expect those configurations to be configured on the switches and then the routers to make sure there is proper connectivity, proper routing, and then everything is working as expected. Okay, but you do not go into the switches and you no. no. Okay, go ahead. Um, if you schedule a software update, for example, mm -hmm. uh, for a thousand um, subclouds, but mm -hmm. only a fraction is online at the moment, uh, will they update whenever they become online again? Automatically? For us, it's a, it's a requirement for the subcloud to be managed and online. So there's an administrative state. Um, as long as it's managed, it will be allowed to be updated. Uh, but also, furthermore, it needs to be online. So when it's offline, it's an error state uh, that that subcloud is considered uh, not manageable, actually, not reachable. So yeah. and uh, also, for example, if you schedule a software update to a new version of uh, mm -hmm. software, then you have to redo it uh, when the uh, actual site is online. Yes, okay. it should be online when it's uh, when the strategy is created. Go ahead. Um, are you able to check the physical integrity of the servers you roll out at the edge, or if somebody maybe compromises it? So at the software level, I think we manage at the software level. In terms of the hardware level, um, apart from the alarming of the different things that we monitor, we do not have full capability to see what is the state of the hardware. So there is a certain amount of monitoring that we do as part of Starling X. Beyond that, if there are any advanced you know, scenarios or advanced error checking, we don't have that capability. Yeah, for example, we're monitoring memory, CPU, 
disks, all the different resources utilization. Uh, if they're beyond a threshold, we raise an alarm. Uh, optionally, we could enable sensors. So depending on uh, what IPMI on that board supports, all those sensors could be thresholded and sent back northbound. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, might be along the same lines. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, during the install, we, uh, we can pass in a certificate that ensures that the proper, that the image that we're sending across is correct. Furthermore, the image that we create is, um, that we deploy is a signed image. So that that's gets to the... So, so during the end of our operation, the, the central cloud is able to confirm that the edge hasn't been tampered with. So when you say tampering, um, just to make sure we understand properly, so are you saying somebody's logging into the edge cloud, they're playing around with some configuration file, changing files, and those type of things? Okay, so from uh, the central cloud perspective, we do not allow manual editing of the files or anything like that. So we, we store a record or a copy of the configuration that the edge cloud was deployed in, and then for whatever reason, if something has changed, when the next reboot happens, we go over it all that and bring back to the, the golden copy or the golden record of how the uh, edge cloud was deployed. So that's how we manage it. So, but that assumes that the OS is trustworthy that's on the edge cloud. So that's why I'm wondering about the remote application. So it sounds like that's not part of the system at this point. Uh, let's take this offline. I, I think we need to discuss more and then understand the, the specific scenario that you are referring to, and then uh, we can try to provide more details. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, sure. <laughs> Sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> so, if I go back here. So here, when you spoke about uh, the standard configuration with dedicated storage. So depending on the amount of resources that you need for storage as part of the, let's say, the network dimensioning or the planning of your deployment, you can add additional storage servers. So those servers will give you the amount of storage, whatever that is needed for the application that you're trying to run. Okay, sorry. Sorry, you had a question. Yeah, so uh, for the deployment, you, you said that you use the REST APIs. Yeah. And then uh, one question I have is, uh, how do you manage different vendor hardware? Do you stick with a pretty strict hardware configuration and then you can rely on the API to your end? Or do you have uh, like hardware version that you follow in each edge? So what we do is we follow the Redfish standards. As long as the hardware vendor is capable of supporting the Redfish standards, we are compliant. If the hardware vendor needs, let's say, some custom uh, APIs or a custom response, then that would be more like additional development on Starling X to support or to integrate with that hardware. So you haven't been in this situation that uh, you expected an API to exist, but in the later version, maybe, in another vendor of the server hasn't changed, and then uh, your API yeah, our, our Redfish uh, interactions is uh, in a containerized image. So from that, we can de we can determine the version that we need to support as well, and possibly release a separate containerized image part. Okay, I think we are running out of time. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for all your questions, comments, and then for your patience uh, for listening to us. If you still have any questions, we'll be around at the Wind River booth where we can talk more about more functionality, more uh, clarifications, or anything that you guys need to know about Starling X. So with that, we'll wrap up. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day. Hope you guys have thank a good folks. time. <laughs>